It would appear that rumors of this playthrough's death were greatly exaggerated. I mean, it was always coming back. It was supposed to be a break for another game because priorities. But I found out like the day before that I'm not going to be finding out about the werewolf knight today in uh, Elden Ring. I'm going back to Kingdoms of Amalur because at some point Elden Ring got delayed till next month. It's been sitting on my ma on my uh, calendar uh, for a while now as coming out on Friday. Like, like now-ish, basically, the day this video is going up, I think, if I remember correctly. So, that's what I expected, but, um, that's not what happened. Where's the... Where's the objective? <laughs> Report to not to Rathier. The Alfar Merchant Navy have a position for a willing and courageous individual. I should check out their official contact, Commodore Garrick, in the Sea Foam Tavern in Rathir. Where's Rathir? Wasn't there like a yellow icon that indicates your objective? Do I have to. Oh, hey. Rathir is the capital place place. I think it's just where I am, right? So let's go back in, I guess, and find the Seafoam Tavern. <laughs> Whoops. My backlog is fucked right now. <laughs> I thought I was in a situation where I was paralyzed. Like, well, I, I can't continue my Patreon slot or my RPG slot because one's waiting for the vote to happen. There we go. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't on the map because it was nearby. I think Rathir has some different rules a little bit for its map too, than some of the world around it. Like I've been in a situation where I couldn't record my RPG slot because I was waiting for a game to come out, and I couldn't record the Patreon slot because I have to wait for the vote to happen. <clears throat> so I just I was like, I guess I'll backlog the AAA slot. I fucking went and recorded an entire classic game to follow up Resident Evil. <laughs> In its entirety. So that one time slot has a backlog of months, and this one is has a backlog of zero days. <laughs> so things are a little uneven behind the scenes, but we'll get through it. It's fine. Busy these days. You must be here about the notice. How do I know? Simple. No one but potential applicants will even speak to me. Must be because I reek of desperation. Of one sending young souls off to certain doom. Right, I forgot I have to turn this game way up on my end because the voices are so weirdly quiet in a way I've never encountered before. C Commodore Garrick. I have served the Alpha Merchant Navy since my youth, when I began my career as a deckhand on the good ship Steadfast. Dead Kel. He is the scourge of the Frostbreak Sea. A terror who seems intent on sinking every ship we sail from Rathir or elsewhere. If only he'd stayed dead. Frostback Sea. It's the fierce icy ocean north of the plains of Erethel. A busy place of trade and transport. And the occasional treachery. Just, I don't know, I keep expecting him to say something. <laughs> So far, it's like, I exist. There's a pirate. I think he's back from the dead. There's an ocean. In the ocean, they do ocean-y things, like have ships. That's the, that's the level the dialogue is on. I'm like, come on, man, give me something. Gallows End. It is the hideaway of dead Kell and his crew. The legends speak of it as a damned isle, a horrible scar on the face of the world. To be quite honest, no one is sure of its true location. For the best, I say. I'm here about the job. Well, once you hear the details, I'm sure you will lose interest. Everyone else does. We of the Alpha Merchant Navy wish to hire a representative to track and kill the notorious pirate Dead Kell and his crew of murderous hanged men. You know, I got that. <laughs> I love, I love him explaining that, like it's like I'm not gonna get going in, but that's exactly where this is going. 
but it was, it was that is the most in unintentionally funny line in the game so far. Once I once you hear the details, you're going to lose interest. It's like, yeah, the details have been the struggle point in this game. Who is dead? Wait, I've already. Is this different? A version of the same question? Who's dead, Cal? They had many names for him during the Middle Kingdom's era. Ghost of the Frostbreak, the Blood Red Sail. Every captain and swab on the Frostbreak Sea feared for their lives when Kel raised his flag. Many widows were made in those days, my friend. Of course, that was centuries ago, before he was killed. They're pretty much what we had, had knew before. He's a pirate. So he did piratey things, but now he died. But then he's not dead. He died? Oh, yes. The Althar Navy put an end to Dead Kel generations ago. They tracked him to his island hideaway and turned his ship to tinder. There were no survivors. Now you understand our predicament. I wish you weren't making it so obvious that he was back from the dead. You know? Like... Have the have him be you know a skeptic, or have a personality, and like the skeptic, the step the skeptic to trying to hire people from the mission would be like, it's like it's obviously some person taking on the mantle, a co a copycat that wants to revel in the legend of of the dead Kel from generations past, and then like when I finally get to dead Kel, it's like, oh shit, he's alive. Also, wait, also, was he always called the Dead Kel, like, before he was dead? Because it kind of sounds like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to double-check all the dialogue, but it kind of sounds like he was always called the Dead Kel, which is just really funny. So it's like how, it's how, like, hey, how Remus Lupin is a werewolf. But, like, he wasn't born a werewolf. His parents named him Remus Lupin, like, Moon Wolf, basically, I think is what that basically means. And it's like, he wasn't a wolf-related for many years. What has he done? Our shipping and transport lanes are a gauntlet. Dead kill preys on our ships like scabs feast on the dying. We are helpless against him. We're losing one in five vessels departing from Rathia. Good sailors gone. Vital supplies sent to the depths. This must end now. What vital supplies? What? Is, what? Who is? Who's being hurt by this? What group of people? Like, are, are you relief workers? Like, is there a city out there starving? Do you have like a personal grudge, a stake in this? Like, please, man. It's like they know that RPGs have a lot of dialogue, and so a good RPG would have a lot of dialogue, but most of these things say basically the same thing, or just reiterate the same basic premise. There's a pirate, he's back from the dead. We're not getting any more from than that, from like... I, I clicked like seven things! That was like seven dialogue choices, and I got what I got from the intro, but re-explained over and over again, man. I'll do it. You will. Truly. I must admit, I did not anticipate this development. Here is your payment. It is made in good faith. Once you've made your preparations, report to Captain Rast Brattigan in the Keys. She will be your escort. Rast is a good and loyal companion and a competent sailor, despite what they say. What do they say? May Lyria protect you, and may her breath ever be at your back. Good luck. Why you gotta just shit on them like that? I don't know what they say. You just kind of poisoned the well there, didn't you? Captain Bradigan. Like, Zat Bradigan? She is the only captain willing to pursue dead Kel into the mists of the Frostbreak Sea. Perhaps it is her courage, her skill, her determination. No, uh, that's not it. Rast is a good woman, but unaware of her own faults, of which there are many. They don't call her the worst sailor alive for nothing. Dude, if you put fucking Zap, a gender bent Zap Bradigan for Futurama in this game, I will lose my shit. Like, you be, don't fucking tease me with this idea and then have her be boring when I get there. She better be fucking great. Like, she should be the most fucking pompous, self assured, horrible person. Like, not necessarily evil, but just completely oblivious to her own bullshit and just re and just someone to revel in. She should be so fucking fun to talk to. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> Scabs. Nothing causes a captain and crew more grief than those little blue beasts. 
Their poisonous secretions can eat through a new hole in a matter of days. They're not native to this region, but they stow away in the shadowy holes of ships sailing up from the north. The Hanged Men. They are Dead Kell's legendary crew, a trio of villains so sinister that their names sink the heart of every sailor. But I won't tell you any more. No, you don't need anything else to stoke your worry. Yeah, why would I want briefing on a mission I'm going on? Jesus, Jesus Christ, man. Excuse me, coming through. You want to hear about the things you're going to do? No. I gotta leave some for the reveals. The reveals being that there's three min mini bosses to fight before you get to the real boss, and they're called the Hanged Men, and there's just, just three of them. <laughs> Please be great, Captain Bradigan. Don't bother me. I'm waiting for a passenger, some suicidal idiot. Can't be caught chatting. I want to make a good impression. That's a decent start. <laughs> Captain Bradigan. I captain my first ship when I was no bigger than my papa's knee, and promptly crashed it into the dock, sinking three vessels with one wreck. It was then that I knew my destiny was to be a sailor. Oh boy. From that day forward, I spent my life on the water. Twenty ships in twenty years. It must be some kind of record. Why do you have such a good memory of your mistakes, though, if you're supposed to be kind of oblivious to it? I, do you think it's a good thing? It sounds like you think it's a good thing. Dead Cal. He's as elusive as a north wind. A phantom with a skull for a face and fins for feet. Every sailor yearns for the chance to face Dead Cal. He and his do hand they? men go where they please. Masters of the Frostbreak. Okay, you're not a good you're not a good source of information, are you? Every sailor wants to face Dead Cal. I think most sailors specifically don't want to face Dead Cal. I'm pretty sure they're trying to get to their destination safely. Gallows End. In my experience, islands are places you visit in order to escape torment and certain death. What? Ugh, Gallows End is one destination I will avoid on future voyages. Unless I crash there, of course. Aren't you trying to catch him? You're deranged. The hanged men. Bloodgrin, the whispering witch, and the baronet. Oh, fiends and killers, all of them. They give sailors a bad name. Well, we have names. Bloodgrin, whispering witch, and the baronet. That's a start. I'm your passenger. Well, tie me up and drag me under. So you're the one the Navy's hooked into finding Gallows End and killing Dead Kell. It's suicide! Really? Ask the others. Oh, wait. <laughs> you can't. But don't worry about them. Like my mother said, don't weep for the fallen. Even if they could hear you, they wouldn't care. I thought you were supposed to be oblivious. Why are, we, why are you warning me? Let's see. Tell me about the dead Kel. He's the worst of the worst. A villain who truly enjoys the pain he inflicts. He's a slippery one, though. Not even death can catch dead Kel. I'd love to be the one to bring him in. Maybe then I'd finally get some respect. What others? You know, the other applicants. Dead. All of them. All of the ones they found, that is. Plenty of others just vanished. One poor fellow was found cut into teeny tiny pieces. They needed a bucket to pull all of him from the surf. But don't you worry, we'll have a fine voyage. What is Gallows End? It is a mysterious island fortress of Dead Kell and his crew. Why? Do you know how to get there? Because I have no idea. I was hoping to figure it out as we go, but I'm starting to wonder if that's a good idea. Do you know how to get there? The, um, the place you just asked about, you know, what it is. Great. All right. You're brave? Flattery will get you nowhere. Unless I've had too much to drink. Then I'm afraid to say it'll get you all sorts of strange places. <laughs> I shall not elaborate. Tari and I are ready when you are. How did you even get in this game? Okay, do I need anything? Only what you want with you in case of an emergency. There aren't many merchants where we're headed. Who's Tari? He's the fine first mate on the ground next to me. 
Words aren't his strength, although I'd be pressed to say what is exactly. I found him after I was forced to maroon my last first mate on a desert island. That man became obsessed with me, probably because we had sex. A lot. That's a bad plan. That's like how most of the Star Trek movies happen, is somebody gets marooned somewhere and then they come back later and then you then their names get yelled dramatically. Uh, you know where you're going? Seeing as I don't believe in navigation, I'd have to say no. Not at the moment. Not to worry. Once you've wrecked enough ships, you get the hang of it. I keep giving you ships. I'm ready. If you're ready to depart, my vessel awaits. You'll find her both swift and seaworthy. Just don't go down into the hold. There's a leak down there. It's big. I'm predicting an uneventful voyage. We might even get bored. Off we go, then. Trust no one. Except me, of course. Mm, she's progress. There's some lines that are better than other ones. Lo, hear the tale of the pirate king who cut a blood-red wake from dark. Rathia to frustrate sea, and dead Kel was his name. With hanged men crew and bow white flag, he sailed from gallows end. No solace for a sailor true when dead Kel's ship came in. Man, guys, please patch the audio balancing. I just matched the volume button all the way from 70 to 30 for that. <laughs> well, there were a few reasons we could have predicted this had happened. A few little hints. Is she just dead somewhere? Or she, nope, she's over there. Yet, yeah, my problem is that, like, she. Like, some of the lines she says are funny, and they're hinting at this and that. Uh, but a lot of it, she's just, like, explaining her faults to you in a self-aware way when her premise is that she's not supposed to be so self-aware. So, like, the fact that she crashes every ship she's ever on and remembers that and knows and basically thinks of it as her fault but doesn't internalize that as guilt or anything and just keeps going is, like... It's a weird whiplash of a character you're trying to figure out what the fuck you're ta she's talking about. And then you expect her to, like, hint at some things, like, Oh yeah, stay out, stay out of the deck, stay, stay above decks, it's a bit damp downstairs. And then you, like, go down and it's like, oh my god, there's a gaping hole down here. But instead she's like, oh yeah, there's a hole under, below decks, uh, it's big. I'm like, what? What am I supposed to do with that line of dialogue? Like, why are you so bizarrely declaring that the ship is already sinking before we leave? There's a big hole, apparently, and we're not talking about what to do about it. And I'm like, it's weird. You expect her to be, like, narcissistically or delusionally uh, downplaying all of the faults, but instead she's just explaining them all to you? Which is kind of like an ongoing thing is that they don't they seem to struggle writing from the perspective of the flawed in, in individuals that they write as characters whenever they do try to make characters and everyone has a really bad case of i read the script already so people just already talk about things in terms of the ending basically so like there's 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 often not much of an arc for characters and also and people often are already talking about the final state of things there there isn't really a series of revelations so far about the dead Kel, because, like, I mean, you know, we'll see, but, like, so far, everyone's just talking about it in terms of, like, what the out end outcome is. It's like, oh, yeah, there's three mini-bosses, uh, here's their names, and they're gonna fight the dead Kel, probably, and, like, they're, oh, it's a dead pirate that came back from life, and everyone already knows that part for sure, apparently, and no one's questioning it, and so there's no, like, competing perspectives, and you'll be told that she's incompetent, but, like, she doesn't in any way hide the fact that she is incompetent, so she just explains her own incompetence to you, to your face, and basically tells you in advance how the ship's going to crash, and then it does crash, and it's like, wouldn't this reveal be all the more funny if she was really confident 
and you were and wasn't just explaining to you how fucked you are and then it's like safe voyages smash cut to crash <laughs> like that's how a reveal would work that's playing with audience expectations and so on uh but it's just it's this so weird it's up there with the strangeness of the guy at the house of valor explaining that like being duplicitous is required to survive in his world or whatever and being like you have to be subtle and underhanded while he's just explaining his evil plan to your face that and and like not being duplicitous to you when he's he's explaining how important subterfuge is and he's but he's not using subterfuge he's just explaining that he wants to kill you to your face and then he, then he does and it's like that's not I, I feel like i shouldn't have to explain the problem here but the the game was made this way so i guess like it seems like it's not that obvious and yeah, I, I, I did my research, by the way, because I've been I've been poking away to see if this is the script that'll get done because I keep making different scripts for things, and this one made some progress. And uh, in my research, I did make sure I did make sure for sure, R. A. Salvatore did not work on this game. The writing is led by a team that was particularly brought on by uh, it was like Big Giant Games or whatever it's called, which was founded by it's like it was the team was being led by like. The guy that was the design lead designer of Oblivion, which is interesting because this game has like none of the mechanics of Oblivion, but does have the exact same uh, faction quest system, like copy pasted from that game. So I'm like, so I was always picking up on that. So it's interesting to see exactly that. And uh, a lot of the, I think, I think the lead writer was not not the lead writer of Fallout Three, but one of the quest writers of Fallout Three. So one of the quest writers of Fallout Three is the lead writer of like this entire game. Uh, R.A. Salvatore made a 10,000 year history for the Kingdoms of Amalur MMO, which this game was not originally supposed to be in the same universe as. This was supposed to be like their opening RPG that helped launch the company or whatever. Then it got re then they decided to retrofit it into the universe of Amalur that was written by uh, R.A. Salvatore retroactively. I say retroactively, I don't think they were, like, done with the game or anything, but, like, during the early development, it was not meant to be a Kingdoms of Amalur game to begin with. Uh, that was supposed to be the MMO, and this was not supposed to be set in the same universe, but then they decided to change it into that universe. But R.A. Salvatore did not, and I just straight up found a quote of him saying this, he did not write the script at all. He only wrote that history for the universe and then moved on, and then these other people wrote it. So it's, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of job type people, like months, a bunch of workhorse uh, video game RPG writer type people that had to fill out all this text. Uh, it is not this, and then they use the star power of Ari Salvatore to help sell the game when his influence was very limited, as it turns out. In particular, I found a very funny uh, interview where he explained exactly my complaints but in more polite terms where he says that he did that he his least favorite thing about the game was the fantasy names and how in the opening hours you were just bombarded with a bunch of made-up words without much context for them and so on i'm like see like he gets it he's like it's kind of mean that they pretend he wrote the game because if he had written the game it probably would be better written because he can point out the exact problems that i am and i'm like hey fucking validation <sighs> wow i did not foresee such a horrendous disaster too bad what are you well everything in its right place most of the others were killed it wasn't quick i heard their cries in the fog but I couldn't do a thing. I... What is... What is happening with this character? Okay, um... They don't... I don't think they get Zap Brannigan. If that is what they're going for. I don't know. They're giving us a blonde character that's supposed to be a captain that is stupid and not self-aware and fails constantly and Brannigan and Bradigan are just so close together in name that it feels on purpose and it's the same character type on paper like the way it was described but she's so weird and I also am wondering if the voice actor is on the same channel as the writer about what the character is supposed to be because she doesn't have like what was that uh, uh, what a disaster I could not foresee happening was that sarcasm? I don't even... 
Because if it's sarcasm, that's like, haha, I failed like I always do. Which is like, what? What? what is this bizarre behavior where you just like keep stubbing your toe on purpose forever in your entire life? And I don't know what that, what's going on there. But if she's supposed to be completely uh, detached and like, wow, I can't believe that happened. The voice actor didn't go there either. Like, she kind of didn't land on sarcasm or sincerity. It just land, sounded weird. <laughs> And so I don't know what she means by that, emotionally. I'm lost on where they're going for with her. But then there's like, I heard the cries from my the fog and I couldn't do a thing. And it's like, but you sounded sarcastic about the crash. As if you like knew it was going to happen. But now, you, but now you feel sad about the dead people. But both lines are delivered flat enough by the voice actor that it, you can't tell if she's even emotional that much about the crew, because the line sounds sad on paper, but the voice actor's not selling it as sad? I don't... Hmm. What happened? Dead cow! One moment there was nothing but open sea before us, and the next, there he was. It didn't take much to sink the calamity. That poor ship was asking for mercy, and dead cow granted her wish. It's called the Calamity? Where are we? Welcome to Gallows End, my friend. At least I think that's where we ended up. I hope you like surprises. Really? So we went from we don't know where this place is to finding it instantly in one loading screen with no like trail to follow. I, I'm sorry for your loss. <sighs> no one is sorrier than I am. Are you? Those men and women were my family. What? Traveling as I do, there aren't many opportunities for closeness. I found that on the calamity. Found it, and lost it. What, like this week? Good thing Tari is still with me. Well, mostly. Haven't you sunk like 20 ships or something? How, how, how long have you been family? What happened to Tari? Not sure exactly, but he's bleeding like a gutted fish. We're going to need to reach shore if we want to fetch help. Are we not we'll on shore? We'll have to come back for him. I wish there was another way. I thought we were already on shore. Is the ship ruined? <laughs> Sir. Gone, Lyria, bless her. Like Mother always said, never love anything, because all things end up dead. A wise woman, my mother. And very, very sad. Aww. The hull drifted off into an eastern cove, where it sank away completely. Only bubbles remain. Yeah, I like that line. I'm, I'm in charge. Without a ship, I no longer possess any authority, so I defer to you. There is a flooded cavern down the beach. It may lead us to shore, although it appears to be blocked. I could try cobalt explosives. I keep a few in my pack, but I can't be certain of the outcome. To be honest, I don't even know if they work. No time to jaw. We cannot let her be handling explosives. I don't think she pointed the right way. That I don't think the, that doesn't seem to be a level in that direction. Okay, who's Tari? Where is Tari? Someone is bleeding. Well, that one's face down in the water. This one's being eaten by a crab. Where is this person? I don't really know which one is the important body. Oh, over here, ahead of you. Why weren't you standing next to your friend? Well, I guess I'll talk to you later if you survive the next five minutes. A hundred and seventy-one! What? That's a lot of defense. But you lose that on sorcery ability points. But do those sorcery ability points even count? At least this also has fire and ice damage. Yeah, that is really just only armor, isn't it? It's definitely valuable, so I'll take it. These people had such good gear and they all were on her crew? Why is... Why are they on her crew? Why did nobody care about... The giant hole in the ship? Aren't... Don't they have crew members? That would care that there's a giant hole in the ship. The Fey Hunter. That's the new set, but it's for melee. 
Maybe I'll collect up some gear and then switch specs for the next expansion. And then the next one, just to spend an expansion as each build. But I do have to amass the gear for it, which with limited inventory, I haven't necessarily wanted to deal with. I know there's a stash, but you can't... There's no, there's no send stuff to stash button, so it's a bit of a thing. At this point, I'm just intentionally avoiding most of the loot because it's such a pain to fill your inventory. Howdy, y'all. What is that? A giant rat. I don't believe they exist. Well, he's dead. And he's dead. So go the rats. Uh... Oh, yeah, the explosives. I don't... I would not want to trust her with explosives. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised that she immediately put the explosives underwater. Of course, she, of course she did. That seems like a great way to use a lit explosive, is just dunk it in the water. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to these expansions because I'm just trying to... I'm curious to see whether how much they will or won't learn from their past mistakes. And I'm especially interested in Fate Sworn because... I don't know the backstory, but... I haven't checked into it yet, but like, I would presume it's made by new people, but it's made by THQ Nordic like a decade later. Survey of Gallows End. Motus Mining Company, Ropaj Jurok, lead ex uh, excavator, uh, uh, capital? I think lead excavator is supposed to end with a period and then a, a line break because it's the introduction of the person. It, but there's no period or line break, so it, my only clue is that while starts with a capital. <laughs> while the island of Gallows End is obviously imbued with magic, there are no native minerals worth the trouble of mining. When our expedition first landed on the island, it was immediately obvious that it was filled with an abundance of natural resources. Upon further study, however, we found that the trees were rotten and the stone unbreakable. The mission's sorcerer found the root cause to be a, cur to be a cursed magic. We traced it back to the source, an Arathi altar on top of a mountain, but we were unable to open the door. The locals were of no help. Most of them have banded together and settled the southern coast, but they all seem to be trapped in some kind of religious zealotry, worshipping a god by the name of Akara. When we get back to Edessa, we will have to our researcher investigate Akara further. There was, on the other hand, plenty to salvage. Not only had the Deverga settled here at one point, but many of their ships had washed ashore. The, the salvage should at least pay for the expedition, but it's not worth another trip back to, the, to collect the rest. We found a large harbor on the west side of the island, of Devergen construction. If perhaps one of the other nearby islands proves fruitful, we could perhaps use these docks as a resupply point. There is also a large Devergen keep in the middle of the island, but it is too much of a state, in a state of repair to be useful. As for the tales of dead Kel, they seem to be false. We didn't run into him or any of his hanged men. There are quite a few fair Gorta, however, and they are a little different than the ones we see back home. They seem to be held together by roots, similar to the larger ones we found all over the island. The wildlife on this island is quite dangerous. What looks like a large rock being a large rock from a distance ends up being a deadly root golem upon closer inspection. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what happens when you get closer to things as they get bigger. We lost two men to these creatures. Additionally, the caves and Tevarga tunnels seem to have filled with scavs, which have already cost us one operation. It is my recommendation that this island be removed from consideration for any new operation. I had a strange comment that was where somebody was like, Why do you keep reading those stupid, boring books? And I'm like, uh, those are supposed to be context for the setting and the story. Uh, this, this kind of supposed to be important in many cases. Like with that Necromancer storyline, the most entertaining part of the entire quest was reading his journal that backfilled his uh, his history. It was more interesting than any of the actual dialogue in the quest along the way. Like, oh man, what's in that basement? It's his wife! Scav. Explode. Wow, he lived. 
I, I could use my second button on you. But yeah, if, if you're uh, if you're thinking, ew, notes and documents about what's going on in the story, don't read those. It's not a great sign for your engagement. Like, oh, you're supposed to, you're really supposed to care about that kind of stuff, honestly. I cannot. I cannot believe we're trusting her with explosives. Maybe she'll explode, and then I won't have to. It won't be an escort mission anymore. Hello, Lana Ash. If that is your real name, oh, you survived the tax. There you go. No, I want her. I want you. I want you so bad. <laughs> they sound like they talk. What's uh, what's going on here? Sure, seems like that part of the wall opens. There's a map and other obvious hints that that piece of the wall opens. Maybe it'll happen after we proceed forward. I want you. Hello. Oop. Oh, shit. Oop. Pressed the wrong button. That's how the other game I've played recently works. No, fucking detonate, dick. You, you can somehow fall into a loop where your character refuses to the, the hold action just doesn't work. It keeps it reading as a as a press. Weird. Hmm. There's definitely something here, but I can't necessarily get back up. It might be the exit. Might not want to do that yet. I've crashed a lot of ships, but I can't claim this one. Dead Kel gets all the blame for the death of the Calamity. He'll pay. I'll see to it. How can we clear a path? My cobalt explosives will do the trick. I only hope I have enough of them. Are we there yet? I think a lot of faith in this pl that this path we've never d taken before is the Tethering correct way forward. Jellyfish. I'm out of explosives. And we're so close. I can hear the waves on the sand. One of us is going to need to find some way to get us through this wall. And by someone, I mean you. You see, I don't swim. Or did I fail to mention that? That seems like a problem for you. Anything that can get us through this wall. Be creative. I'd help you, but I can't swim. But I Let's can't go. be creative. My favorite color is green. It's not. <clears throat> Compendium 14? From Alamein to Varan. It's just like a bunch of information about all of everything? Who are the Varani? I don't know who the Varani are. It says Ice Brine Coast. This might be related. Varani history. These people are said to have descended from an ancestry co uh, shared in common with Almain, along and long ago migrated north and away from the fertile lands of su southern Alfaria. The word Varani is derived from the Jotun word for traveler or trader, and despite many attempts bu by Almain, Alfar, and others to bring the Varani under their influence, they have remained independent from any government. It is said that the desire to avoid governance is what drove the Varani away from the human kingdoms of the Almain and Basawin. As such, the Varani are to be found inhabiting islands off the coast as much as the coast itself. Varani appearance. The Varani are similar to Almain in average, si 
in average size and are typically more fair-skinned and fair-haired. They often feature elaborate tattoos or jewelry to accent their otherwise practical, cold-weather clothing. Their garments are made to withstand the rigors of sea travel to their Vikings, as well as the uh, cold of Icebrine Coast from whence they originate. Jewelry is usually made from gold, and nobles wear silks or pelts as well. The influence of other cultures can easily be seen in their manner of dress, including the rich colors of the Alfar. Uh, Varani men usually groom long beards, they're Vikings, and sometimes braid them, they're Vikings. And the Varani women tr traditionally plait their hair, they're Vikings. Varani society. The Varani are mostly nomadic, because they're Vikings, seafaring people, because they're Vikings, found along the Icebrine coast, and other lands along the no northern coast. They have small settlements that serve as trading outposts, but are merchants or sailors more than farmers or fishermen. The Varani society is non, a non-gender-based meritocracy. All roles aboard the ship are valued, and while they may or may not be equal, they are not without their place and purpose. The Varani believe that anyone who is cunning and able to hold his or own deserves a place aboard a ship. The Varani are not as religious as the Almain, but they are considered very superstitious. They use charms and amulets to ward off evil. While they are not, not while they are is no unifying religion, the Varani are sensitive to signs and omens. They have a strong concept of luck. Most of their superstitions involve the sea, which they regard with respect. Because they're Vikings. <laughs> they're gender neutral Vikings. Wow. <coughs> They're getting, getting us caught up here, aren't they? Okay. Compendium 8? Eel so far? Oh, mm. Looking for anything related to the setting to say this is relevant? I'm not sure if this is so relevant. Hmm. Ember Eyes. Essence of Elidus Senilus, known as Ember Eyes. It's just a detailed thing about a plant. I'm not sure about some of these. They, they kind of seem randomly placed, but it's hard to be sure. I do try to parse relevancy a bit. Just because, obviously, sometimes those books come at you fast. The game says go that way, so of course I'm going this way. Oh, this is the return path, it looks like. Look at that big old shell. Ah. Yeah, no, I see what's going on here. So I'm going to find an explosive and then I'm going to come this way and blow up that shortcut to get back upstairs. So me jumping down here is completely... My survival is now completely dependent on finding that explosive. Because I just jumped off a cliff with no plan on how to get back. That's some real protagonist thinking right there. Hey, I'm the main character of this entire universe. Things will probably work out for me. Almost like this level is made for me. Look, I have exactly two explosives. One for the shortcut back and one for the actual thing that is why I got the explosives. You know, I, I, hmm. That could be a fun idea for a short story, right? An, an RPG protagonist. Not, I don't mean specifically, but like, that doesn't make sense. Video games, waka waka. Like the whole, that whole line of comedy people always mine specifically about how, like, isn't it, if you think about video game mechanics in real life, they don't make any sense. Did you just stand outside that shop for eight hours waiting for it to open? Who would ever do that for an Xbox? <laughs> uh, but I mean, like, specifically, like, having a, pr a protagonist uh, who th the world is just designed for. Because, like, this cave is designed for me to succeed it. And that's how video games generally work, even the supposedly hard ones. Like, that is still... They're, they design to en are designed to enable you. They're a theme park ride. But it's like, what what would that do, like, to, to a person experiencing the world that way? And then would they eventually start to notice? 
Like, where does luck end and Truman Show begin? You know, we came from a direction with fresh air, so... You know. Also, I doubt you could hear the waves from there. If anything, you heard them from where we came from. In fact, what way? Yeah. We survived! I didn't want to say anything in the cavern, but I was betting against us. In the words of my dear departed mother, always prepare for the worst, for it'll probably happen. There looks to be a settlement on the beach. Come! Let's see who's at home. Did I forget something? We weren't trapped, were we? Ready when you are. I don't think we were trapped. We could have just gone back if he didn't have enough explosives. Like, Also, how did you hear the waves on the sand? There's no sand. They're hitting cliffs. There was a massive cave-in blocking the door. <laughs> I don't think that, those kinds, that kind of rocky cave-in is known for uh, conducting sound very well. direction. It's not just little crab -os. It almost sounds like a wolf or something. Or something. Or a caribou? Some big call. Yeah. My power gives me secret spots, but then when I get there, I don't want the stuff that's in them. Alder Malloy. Kara blesses us with another lost soul. Welcome, stranger. I am Alder Malloy, and you've arrived at Cape Solace just in time. Tell me, how have you come to find yourself upon our shore? What is Cape Solace? It is a village established by those of us whose fates have brought us to Gallows End. Sailors and settlers, foreigners and families, but castaways all. We have made a life here on these beaches and in this village. Sounds like the dead Kel isn't that aggressive then, if you're just hanging out here. Who is Akara? Akara is the reason I am here. The reason all of us on this island are here. And maybe, my friend, and it's why you are here as well. Akara is this island and everything upon it. We're here for dead Kel. Click. Click. Ah. So you're here for the oppressor. He who was cast down. You're not the first to arrive on these shores in search of him. You will not be the last. But Akara's magic protects us here in Cape Solace. We are safe from dead Kel's deathless touch. The same cannot be said for those who venture past the boundaries of the village, near the keep and the surrounding forest. You know dead Kel? Dead Kel was the favorite son of Akara. He was given great gifts from our protector, only to squander them in the pursuit of power. We are blessed not to fear him. So many others live at his mercy, but not those of us here on the safety of the beaches. Akara protects the faithful. So the Akara are protecting you from Akara. What is the key? What, what is the key? Why, it is the great fortress that looms in the north. Grave Hall as it was named by the Deverga craftsmen who raised its mighty walls. But the Deverga have long since abandoned the island, leaving their great keep empty. Some in the village, like Paddy, are intrigued by the keep's dark courts and corridors. But I would avoid it. Grave Hall is haunted. Why are we safe here? The villain dead Kel rules much of this island, and he strives tirelessly to control every last inch. Akara will not let this happen. We are protected in this spot alone, just south of the river and along the coast. The Fallen One has no power here, and it enrages him. I'll help how I can. Then you will fit in well, for keeping the village strong is truly a group undertaking. 
We get by with Akara's blessing and providence, of course. You may stay with us for as long as you wish, but might I suggest that you find a way to make yourself useful? We all must do our part. That one animal is just losing its shit in my left ear every few seconds. Akara. He is this island and everything on it. His power and wisdom give us direction. Help us to chart a course through the thundering storm of this mortal life. Akara has been a part of Gallows End since before the first castaway dragged his boat ashore and kissed the damp sand beneath his feet. We here in Cape Solace worship Akara because it is he who provides safety, sustenance, and sense of purpose. How much purpose? You kind of just, you're just kind of trapped hanging out here for the rest of your life, aren't you? Chart, of course, is a funny phrase to use when you not only have lost your ability to sail anywhere, but also exist in a world where everyone's destinies are predetermined. Alder Malloy. I once captained my own craft. I was a thief and a smuggler. But all that changed when I found myself here, upon this mysterious shore. Akara blessed me with a second chance. That is what he does. He shows you what is possible. He shows you the fates of which you've never fathomed. I met Bridget, another castaway. And later we had our beloved Nina. All the happiness I'd ignored in my early life were suddenly mine. Dad Kel. He and his hanged men are not welcome near our village. Akara has made it so. The fallen sun stalks the forest and coasts of Gallows End, but he is a prisoner here as much as anyone. One day, Akara will rid us of him once and for all. No, but I will. Frostbreak Sea. I prefer the rolling tides of the Frostbreak to any grassy plain or hillside. I have lived a life adrift, seeing the world and meeting interesting people. <laughs> it got so much louder. Gallows End. All who find themselves on these white sand beaches have been drawn by Akara. Here you will discover many mysteries, but none more important than what to do with this opportunity. Who will you be when you leave Gallows End? The same person who came? Or someone else entirely? When I leave, are you guys implying people leave? Because it sounded like you were implying everyone just stays here forever. Nina Malloy. She means well, but like all children, she craves freedom and independence. She will learn to respect boundaries. This is an island, after all. Adric Dower. He's a funny one, played by delusions and inspiration. I've known Akara to touch people, but Paddy acts more touched in the head than blessed. Ever since he arrived, Paddy has had a covetous eye on Grave Hall Keep. I don't know what it is about that old ruin that so bewitches him. The Hanged Men. Magical deviants like their master. The Hanged Men terrorize any who brave the wilderness. Bloodgrin stalks the docks of Kells Harbor to the west, while the Baronet rules the mountains in the north, haunting its peaks and twisted islands. Worst of them all is the Whispering Witch. We never know where she will strike next. Haunts the mountains. Is there anyone there to haunt? I feel like there's not much of an influx around here, and it seems like a lot of the people that do would end up here. Hey, why is the primary path from the beach to here blocked by a bunch of cave -ins? Dude, how did you guys all get up here? There's cliffs everywhere, and if you go past the river, you're in danger? Where's the river? Like, right there? Is that the river right there? How do you guys normally get up here, like, to get new people, since new people keep showing up? If the cave that seems to most directly lead here, it has a path, even, uh, is full of cavens? Elwa has potions if you need them. Well, what do you think? I don't know about you, but all of this talk about Akara is unsettling. I'm going to ask around about ways to get off the island, since I'm almost certain we're not going to want to stay. I'm so lonely. <clears throat> I've been in some strange places, but this place tops them all. I hope you don't plan on settling down. How will we get back? We'll have to secure another vessel, but from the looks of the village, they don't often venture past the reef. In the meantime, I'll ask you to scour the beaches for survivors of our wreck. I fear that we may be all that's left of the Calamity. 
Such a possibility has left me agitated. I try not to worry. Anxiety doesn't agree with me. I throw up. Well, you said that you saw everyone was dead, supposedly, but... That one guy's bleeding. We should be go- we should be, we, Did you forget him immediately? We need to go back for that guy. There may be more survivors. I did not see my bosun Thora among the dead. Or his wife, Asa. There's a chance they have evaded death's grip and still count among the living. Mark my words. If even one of them survives, I will fight to the Earth's edge to find them. I'll bring them back. That's the spirit. I knew taking you on board was the right idea. That fortune teller didn't know what she was talking about. I will stay here and speak to Alda about a boat. And I'll have them send men to fetch Tari from the sandbar. I'll have dead Kel's head if it's the last thing I do. Where should I search? What was left of the ship drifted towards a cove past the eastern cliffs. I'd search there first, and I'd hurry. Bring them back. Wasn't the ship split in half? How is it drifting around? You think anything left of it would probably be lost? Or is it just that? Is that it? It was just the mast? The mast and sail kind of floated away? And people might have been on it? Maybe. I find this entire approach questionable. Hmm. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. We're going. You have a you have a, a supernatural ability to know where that where that crash went. So far away. Sticking to the path's probably the thing to do. New location. That's the keep? Wow. Right it's right next to their camp. He's powerless to cross that stream. Almost makes me think about vampire rules a little bit, but like he can he can sail. He can't cross that one stream, but he can but he definitely can sail. There must just be like a an aura, an energy bubble. Just like nope, can't get past me. This is God Island. The god lives here, and you can't get it, you can't do it. Nope. Just can't. You'll you'll you burn or something. Stay away from God place. The place to whomst is God. <laughs> Maybe it's in the back of a giant turtle. The Pyromancer. Plus 5% fire damage. Health and mana. Yeah, but this one has five percent fire damage. Maybe it, maybe it still works when it's equipped as the second weapon. I'm not clear on that kind of stuff. Remember, you can fast travel. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, boy, do I know. <laughs> Mercy be whoever plays this game without fast travel. enough of you. How you doing? He just... Wait. So, I'm not the only one who walked out of that mess. I figured you for a sturdy one, but surviving that wreck, that's fate. Ah. We shouldn't waste a moment. My wife, my Acer, she still lives, but they took her. I've never seen anything like it. Scavengers. They looked like fair Gorta, but not like any I've ever seen. I enjoy the irony of that line, but I'm confused why you look like there's like a giant bloody drag mark leading to your body and then you're laying in a pool of blood, but you just kind of casually got up for this conversation. Are you fine? Any other survivors? No, it was just us. 
Asmir, Kelly, Free, Edric, Yudin. They're all gone. All dead. They were good people. Proud. Not the bedraggled bunch many mistook them for. It's a shame. Is that sound just going to play constantly with no context? It's just, it's always nearby. There's always this howling. I'll get her back. Find someone else! Thank you. I won't forget this, truly. I will make way inland. If there are others on this island, I will find them and I will send them. My heart goes with you. There's not much time. That dialogue is straight up. Yeah, I, I, I could help you, but have you considered uh, going in a, in a, in a, in a, in a fucking yourself? <laughs> how, how about you go fuck yourself? Who is howling? Oh, oh, ah, shit. Leave me alone. I don't want to be on Death Island. Or whatevs. Alright, who's just around the corner? Up there inside here. Cliff break fasting. It's called fasting, but can that really be what it is if it's if it just swallowed me whole? <laughs> You're not a sailor, are you? Sailors pitch when they walk dry ground, list like drunkards at a wake. No, you're not one of them. So who are you? Who are you? My name is Nina Malloy. You met my father Alder back in the village. He wouldn't be pleased to find me here. Of course, very little pleases my father. I've walked this island since I was no bigger than a boggart, yet I'm still prohibited from venturing past the village on my own. I can take care of myself. See, that's, that's, that's a strange little bit of I read the script moment. You met my father. Really? Because you weren't there. You may have met my father. You, you must have run into my father. My father's back at the village. There's so many variations you could say. But you say with absolute certainty, you met my father when you weren't there. Like, that's just such a strange way to write that line. You'd think that that would, like, get, that would come up when you're passing over it again and be like, hang on a minute. This is a weird line. You shouldn't be here alone. Ha! What did you know? I killed my first scav in this very fasting. I don't need protection. Not yours. Not my father's. Not Akara's. Keep telling our people that the offering only makes us slaves. Makes us weak. But do they listen? No. They've been trained not to. The other option was you followed me, so maybe she did follow me, and so she literally did see that happen. But she was ahead of me, so I've got questions. Hmm. Can you leave the island? We can leave whenever we wish. All of us. Only we lack a vessel fit for such a journey. It wouldn't matter, however. Most of the villagers in Cape Solis wish to stay right here. My father has them convinced that their destiny is to serve Akara. My destiny is my own. If only he understood that. Yeah, no, bad news. That's not how destiny works in this universe. You can guys, all you guys can just go fuck yourselves. I'm the only person that gets to make choices. Is the offering bad? We sacrifice one of our own people to Akara. A being none of us have ever seen. And one that's desires are not known to us. Is the offering bad? Yes. Ah, why is that, that creaking is so loud. It's louder than she is. What is the offering? It takes place once in a generation. A member of the village is chosen, and then she's offered to the god Akara as a sacrifice. During the offering ceremony, Akara imbues the chosen one with his magic and transforms her into his arbiter, his mouthpiece in the village. We follow her guidance, whether we wish to or not. I'm sorry, that, that sound is so distracting. Is it supposed to sound like we're on a ship? Because that sounds like a ship to me. Like the tension of like a sail or a rope and scaffolding and things. But like... We're in like a cave? I don't know what that sound would be caused by. But it's literally louder than she is when she's talking. Uh, there's a woman in trouble. Yes, so I gathered. The scabs aren't partial to intruders. Especially ones they can eat. I'll join you if you don't mind. I'll know these tunnels better than anyone. Lead on. I'll watch your back. Right. How did Carry she get on. so deep into this place? Oh, she got, she got, a uh, oh, more people. She got taken, right? 
but like in a weird drag her away non-lethal way. Wait, is this a streak of blood that I follow to find her? I don't think she's okay. I think we're gonna f What is all this creaking? It's so loud. Isn't this like a pretty static setting that's underground and not really being like blown around or anything? I don't, that's pretty unnerving if it's making this much noise, honestly, because that I feel like that implies it's all going to come down. Eh, open cave. Is this a suspiciously circular uh, dungeon? How did, how did I guess? <laughs> Don't be frightened. I call the first, the Arathi. Greetings, dear Netta. If I view this record as a personal correspondence, it makes the distance bearable, keeps the fear at bay. You know how expeditionary travel vexes me. Eh, I shall begin. I was not certain what to expect following my disembarkation upon this grim isle. After initial investigation, there appears to be a significant Erathi presence. One that predates any other signs of organized life on the island. It is a curious thing. Why would such beings descend to this wounded realm? Whatever beckoned to them, its call must have been incredibly powerful. More research is needed. Be well, dear Netta. I miss you. They came as soon as the hull went under. The cargo, the survivors, the sails, everything stripped like flesh from a bone. I didn't think I'd live to see the morning. Not with dead Kel here. Dead Kel? I never believed in him. Not until his minions blasted a gaping hole in our hull that sent us straight to the bottom. He'll get his. You just wait. Healing? You can ha have her heal. I think she'd heal herself. A Asa Arding. I've sailed with Captain Brattigan since the beginning. My husband and I hired her to ferry us across the Forian Strait to Odessa. After the wreck, we floated in the open sea for a whole week without food. That kind of experience creates lasting bonds. What do you say beginning? What do you mean? Didn't she suppose the captain's ship when she was like a baby? She was like a toddler? She said she was as big as her, as her dad's knee? Was that exaggeration? She says she's crashed 20 ships. You've been on all 20 ships that were everyone else? Because it seems like people die during these crashes, but you've lived through all of them? Gallows End. Everyone has heard about this place, but few have ever actually laid eyes on it. It's beautiful, really. But most dangerous things are. Will you be okay? I'm going to see if there's anyone else on this island. There are too many structures for it to be deserted. Yeah, no, there's a there's a there's a camp. I found them. Uh, you you're yeah. Don't be foolish. Why would that happen now? <laughs> yeah? Are you okay? I'm going to see if there's more people on this island. That wasn't the question I asked. <laughs> you seem to be bleeding everywhere and in a place full of monsters. But, and you're laying down moaning. But, I'm going to see if there's more people on this island. It's a strange answer to that question. Anyway, back to the, back to the exit. Dialogue is odd. And what is this? Tell me, stranger, what brings you down these dank passages? Salvage? Riches? The allure of a most magnificent death? Hmm? If you must die, it should be at the hands of a monster like me. My victims are almost as infamous as I am. His sword swings of killing that guy as if he was just waiting to kill him in front of me, apparently, whoever that guy was. Uh, 
His sword swings were weirdly whiny sounding. It's like, <laughs> like, what? Okay. Not really selling me on how cool you are. And I can see your face under that mask. I think he might be, I think, yeah, I think I was right the first time with the, uh, with thinking that he was an intruder. I mean, not an impersonator. How are you alive? I have touched the hand of death and been chosen. So it is with all great men. We, we transcend, transcend mortality. But, but you wouldn't know of such things, would you? Really? Death will not have me. Not, not until I am satisfied. And, and I am not satisfied. Oh no, I still hunger. Bro, you're a pirate in the part of the map that's called the Fey Kingdoms? Where everyone's- where there's a, there's a bunch of Fey? Yeah, death doesn't have much of a grip on them either, bro. Most of the characters I've met don't die and they won't fucking shut up about it. But sure, go off, fam. What are you doing? I came back from the death too. Wow, you're so impressive. What are you doing? Sinking your ship was only the start. Now it must be stripped to its bones, picked apart piece by glorious piece. Everyone scavengers. It is how we survive. Killing the crew. Well, that was for pleasure. Forgive me if I like to treat myself every once in a while. Treat yourself. Uh, you'll pay for your crimes. Will I? The Alpha Navy tried to stop me once. They sought to stretch my neck. Yet who do you think ended up dangling from the gallows? You Don't you make the same mistake they did. Don't come to my home and call for my head. It's foolish, and worse, disrespectful. I will forgive you this once, but that is all. Now leave Gallows End. What? Bro, you attacked us. Like you, we we would have we would have we would be able to leave if you didn't break our ship. And why why is he ultimatuming right now? It really undercuts his ferocity if he's just like, get out of here, last warning. Oh man, I'm gonna get you if you're still here when I wake up. Canning to a hundred. I I thought it, I thought I was supposed to be fucked no matter what. You just executed that guy. Stranger. Find a ship, find a captain, then sail far, far away from Gallows End. I'll see that your friend gets to the village. After that, I'm going to do some exploring. There was another crash not soon after yours, a ship that ran aground up north. I was planning to follow the survivors inland, but there also might be something of value in their wreckage. You know Dead Kel? I wouldn't call him a close relation, but I've seen him from time to time. He doesn't show his ghastly face around Cape Solace that often. But I guess even he's got an interest in good salvage. Tell me about the wreck. I can't be sure of what happened until I see for myself. But it was a large ship, a merchant galley, or perhaps even an old naval vessel. It was big, though, and it rode low in the water. Loaded down with cargo, or with men, or with both. Follow the survivors. Good idea. You never can tell if these castaways are going to be friendly or just plain mad. Look at you. Perhaps I'll see you back at Cape Solace. Look at you. Till then, try to stay out of trouble. We'll meet again. He said that in a funny way. <laughs> It'll be a piece of money. All right, who got murdered up here? There's Udin. I thought Udin was on the list of people that died. Udin and Kelly and so- yeah, I remember him on the list. So they just prematurely declared him dead? Is it because they knew he was going to die in the script? Or did they just presume him dead incorrectly despite themselves being people that were presumed dead that I found also? Here we go. We'll loop back around and get the hell out of here. We really did just leave the medic lady back there. Like, eh, she'll find her way back to camp. She's not, like, laying on the floor or anything. Is that a one-way drop? You can't go that way. I, I went through that whole dungeon because I couldn't do this little drop. 
<laughs> oh, they always do that, but that's one of the funnier ones. It's never been that small before. But there was no verticality in this place. Oh, that's pretty funny. Alright. Next time on Dragon Ball Z.